Welcome to the Kobe Bryant Film Room. Hey, what's up, guys, man? Uh, hopefully, guys, you guys have a good morning. Had a good morning so far. Oh, uh, man. Uh, subscribe, like, and subscribe to the channel, y'all. Uh, I got a treat for y'all tomorrow, man, coming in, man. Hopefully, I can get this next video uploaded tomorrow for you guys. I got a treat for you. Um subscribe if you haven't subscribe to the behind the bench sports network i'm going to be reacting to this scap attack video man and you know scap is our guy you know what i'm saying when it comes to these little mini documentary series bro he's probably he, i don't want to say this because i haven't seen everybody's stuff but he's to me right now he's the best on youtube right so let's check it out this oh yeah by the way this video is uh, called it's titled Kobe owned the 2000s and it wasn't even close and I believe the same thing y'all I believe it wasn't close either right so let's get into it of all time a debate which has been percolating around yep. various NBA hot stoves uh -huh. for the better part of 60 years and generally, yeah. the individuals who owned each NBA era, broken down by decade, beginning in the 1960s and running all the way until today, are the players most commonly found in these top 10 conversations yeah. and GOAT debates. But starting in the 1960s and running all the way to the 90s, all of those The NBA era has a proud history, y'all. And, and you know what's funny? Like... When I see those images of the past, and I'm just I just think back about just the game of basketball. It's so awesome seeing our past legends, man, and seeing the, the pretty much the evolution of the game, and seeing time go by. Right, you could see things like certain eras, and you could feel it. Like you go back, you could feel some of the authenticity and some of the sometimes some of the grit. Uh, just some of the battles, man, epic battles that these great titans had. As were and are subject <laughs> to some kind of debate. It wasn't until the 90s where a player singularly MJ. owned an era with Jordan leading the league in scoring Ooh, and winning a championship in all six years that he played in during the decade. Look but at that. Dominance. A ring for every finger, y'all. You know what I'm saying? And one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and MJ's going to let you know about it. He was stunned. I think that's the 2K. Uh, Y'all tell me if I'm wrong, but I think that's the 2K uh, promo that he, that he did. Following his three-peat repeat at the end of the 97-98 season, the NBA was left in a state of limbo, waiting for the next great player to take over. And in those last two years of the 90s, two really good first service team. and use those final two seasons Woo. as a springboard to audition and set the stage for their claim as the GOAT of the following decade of the 2000s. It was a strike-shortened 50-game season in the 1998-99 league year when 22-year-old Tim Duncan would lead the San Antonio Spurs to the best record in the NBA. And what would hey, be- y'all, Tim Duncan was putting in work. Like, for real, bro. Like, the Tim Duncan, when he first came on the scene, the first thing that came to my mind is, oh, my Lord, this dude can ball. Look, him and David Robinson on the same team? That was big back then. The Twin Towers, y'all. I'll far. never forget of five eventual NBA championships. The following season in 1999-2000, Shaquille O'Neal would ah. win league MVP while leading the league in scoring and winning Damn. the NBA championship. And the following decade of the 2000s would then present a case for seemingly three or even four Damn. different players in what many present as the greatest coin toss era of them all. With O'Neal dominating the early portion of the decade, producing averages of 21 points, 10 rebounds, and two blocks per game. Shaq was a straight monster, an animal, a beast, the original Superman. <laughs> and your span of the 2000s. While being named to ah. eight All-Star games and making an All-NBA first team six times during the decade, 
he would add an additional all nba third team selection during Damn. this decade as well as two all nba defensive second team honors all of the individual accolades en route to three championships during the 2000s two at the front end of the decade with the los angeles lakers and one in the middle part of the decade with the miami heat and as great as shaquille o'neal was during this decade yeah. his reign tapered off in the second half while the 22 year old that won the first post jordan era title in the 98 99 <laughs> season was only getting started damn and tim Duncan damn was that ben wallace to not just hold up hold up hold up hold up, hold up. We can't just go back. Was that the role that won the first post Jordan era title in the 98-99 season was only getting Yeah, I got to go back and watch that 2005 matchup. I got to refresh my memory on that. I think I remember most of it, but damn. <laughs> and Tim Duncan would grow damn. into not just arguably the best player of the 2000s during this decade, but would become one of the best players of all time as he is generally no credited doubt. with being the best power forward in mm. NBA history. And when evaluating his play during this decade, it was easy to see why. During this decade of the 2000s, Tim Duncan averaged 21 points, 11 and a half rebounds, and 2.3 blocks per game. Monster. While being named to an all-star team every season and being named to a first team all NBA distinction six times with three second team honors and one third team. Wow. Rounding out the decade, with an All-NBA team selection for all 10 years. He also made six All-NBA <laughs> defensive firsts. And he was still dominating even when he was older. Bro, Tim Duncan was still like, it's, it was weird because his numbers went down, but his impact was crazy. Like even at an old age. And he wasn't no longer like the old Tim Duncan. But bro, whenever he'll see like a Chris Bosh or a Blake Griffin, bro, he he school them old school style teams during this decade while being named second team defense four times thus making an all nba defensive team all 10 years of this decade as well yes therefore duncan was the best player at his position on both sides of the floor for a decade and he's, a, he's the greatest defender of the decade for sure for sure uh well yeah yeah you gotta give it to him because in that span, I mean, you got Ben Wallace. It, it's 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 between a couple of guys. But I think I would give it to Tim because he was a little bit more like consistent, like as far as throughout the whole decade. Three NBA championships along the way, making him an easy candidate for the best player of this or any decade. He was so great that he overshadowed other elite all-time players throughout this decade, such as Dirk Nowitzki who averaged 24 and a half points per game, nine rebounds, and Absolutely. three assists per game for the 2000s. Averaging more points than either Duncan or Shaq, while oh. scoring more total points for the decade than either of them, substantially more. Nowitzki would also be named an all-star nine times during this decade, while being named All-NBA yeah, first or second shot. team eight times in the 10 years. And for a seven while Dirk would ultimately capture his one and only NBA championship, which is one of the very you, best. You don't see, you don't see seven-footers shooting like Dirk. Now, like you got Jokic, but I don't think he's the Dirk level type shooter. You know what I mean? Like you really don't see guys. Like, Dirk on that one-legged fadeaway was unstoppable. Like, no one could get that. No one. That was almost like the sky hook. Like, his version of the sky hook. It was crazy. Idols in NBA history. That wouldn't ultimately come until the next decade. Along with Duncan and Dirk, the decade of the 2000s would yield yet another historical all-time great power forward, also in the loaded Western Conference. Animal. As Kevin Garnett would rise to prominence during the 2000s, Animal. being named an all-star every year of this decade and averaging 21 points, 12 rebounds, and four and a half assists a right. night, while being named to an All-NBA team seven times for the 10-year span, along with All-NBA defensive honors nine times ah. in the decade. Also along the way of this decade, a new crop of NBA talent would come along in the 2000s. And that, and that 2003 uh, uh, draft class, man, they came in. Everybody was getting it. <laughs> I mean, everybody was getting it in that draft class, bro. I, I remember it like it was yesterday, man. 
Carmelo and LeBron having that battle, you know, as far as who was going to be that guy, even though a lot of people were leaning towards LeBron, a lot of, a lot of people back then thought it was a thing between Carmelo, Carmelo and LeBron because Carmelo was, was balling. The draft, Early a legendarily yeah. stacked draft class, rivaling the 96 class and the 1984 class for the best draft ever. Mm. In this one, LeBron... So who do y'all think had the best draft ever, man? The 84 or, the, or uh, 96 or 2003? Man, that's tough, man. I mean, one's draft has Michael Jordan and Hakeem Olajuwon on it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and we got AI and, and Kobe. In another draft, man, it's 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 really you know, I I'll probably have to lean eighty four, y'all, because I'm big on Hakeem Olajuwon and I'm big on Michael Jordan. Even though Kobe Bryant is my my favorite player and my goat, like those Hakeem and, and Mike, I had to go eighty four. James, Carmelo Anthony, Chris Bosh, and Dwayne Wade would come off the board in four of the first five picks. While none of them have a valid claim on this decade, wow. all of them would make immediate impacts during the 2000s, ah. most notably Dwayne Wade <coughs> and LeBron James, with Wade averaging 25 and a half points Yo, per game. We got to go through some Dwayne Wade highlights too, because Dwayne Wade was freaking killing in the 2000s. Like, oh my lord, he was killing. Five rebounds, six and a half assists, and nearly two steals per game for the seven seasons he played in the decade, while winning a championship in the 2005-2006 season and claiming finals MVP that year. LeBron, meanwhile, would average nearly 28 points per game, seven yeah. rebounds, and seven assists, <laughs> while being named Bro, all in the first or second team six of his seven seasons. That, that, that's my favorite version of LeBron right there. Now, I know everybody likes Miami Heat. I like Cleveland version of LeBron. Like, because he was just freaking, look at that dunk right there. He was out, he was insane athletic during the 2000s, yeah, but he wouldn't be able to parlay any of that individual success into win. And I feel like he played harder back then. Like it was, I feel like it was more basketball back then from LeBron than like now I just feel, I don't know, like the past couple of years, man, it just ain't feel like pure basketball, you know. Until joining the other elite newbie that came in the 2003 draft class. Oh, and one other guy from the top part like, of that class. This is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying, y'all. I feel like he was forced to get into his bag more. That's what I'm trying to say. He was forced to get into his bag in the 2000s. Nowadays, the defense really just kind of lets him go by. Like, he gets a lot of blow bys and, you know, guys not even contesting shots and things like that. Back then, like, I felt like... He had to pull off more more stuff. You got to see him like really, really get it in. That, however, <laughs> wouldn't be until the following decade of the 2010s. But what if I were to tell you that despite all of the greatness displayed during this decade, yeah. one player dominated yeah. the 2000s more thoroughly than any player in any other decade in league history, aside from the 90s. And they can't and they can't take it from him. What? Yes, they it's can't true. Take it and it was not any of the aforementioned players. While it's true, the decade from the 2000-2001 ah, season and running through the 2010 cash. league year is one that would be presented as a toss-up by revisionists in the biased media. And, and, and you know what? They're trying to rewrite the, the, the mess. Bro, they're trying to rewrite history. like, And it's so crazy because it's like, yo, like we were there... All these other guys were great, but Kobe was consistently considered the best player in the world. And all the other guys were great, but it was Kobe. Now they're trying to spin it like, oh, yeah, the players think it was Tim Duncan. Well, how come none of these great, these players are vouching that? Most of them are saying Kobe, y'all, because that's what it was. It's only when you get to 2022, around that time, yeah, other people pushing this nonsense. Here's on social media. In get them scat. Get them scat. Bryant get them scat. Dominated this decade yeah. more thoroughly than any player in league history ah. aside from Jordan's 90s. In this 10 year span, 
Kobe led the league in both scoring average and total points scored. One of only three players in league Damn. history to do so, joining Chamberlain from the 60s and Kareem from the 70s. His 28 and a half points per game during this decade is the fifth highest average ever in league history behind only Will Chamberlain and Oscar Robertson's averages in the 60s and Michael Jordan's app. Y'all see that? And they try to exclude, exclude my man from the GOAT conversation. Y'all see that? Averages this is for a decade. This ain't for a couple of years. This is for a decade, y'all. Ten years. 80s and 90s. While Kobe's 21,550 total points scored in this 10 year span is the fourth most ever, trailing only Kareem's 1970s Man. total by a mere 264 Man. total points for third place and behind Wilt and Oscar Robertson's monstrous decade of the 1960s. But while Wilt and Oscar played in the turbocharged pacing of the 1960s, which was the highest score decade in NBA history, where nightly league-wide scoring averages were 115 points per game. Yo, ain't that crazy? Like, ain't that crazy? Decade from 2000 through 2010 that Kobe was in his prime during was the slowest paced, lowest scoring decade ever awesome. by far, with nightly scoring averages for his 10 year span. You get them three dudes. Look at this. This is how he was guarding. He was in his prime during. Was the slowest paced, lowest scoring decade. That's fake defense. Do you see where they came from over Rwanda? 115 points per game. The decade from 2000. Look at this. Through 2010. That Kobe was in his prime during. Was look the on the screen, right? Look at all of them standing around. They looking at Kobe. They ain't paying attention to nobody else. That's fake defense. Lowest paced, lowest scoring <laughs> decade ever by far. With nightly scoring Look averages at this. for his 10 year span. Look at, at this. Only 96.9 points per game. Nearly 20 points per game less than the 1960s. The 2000s were also significantly lower than the 108.3 <laughs> point per game average God Kareem hope. enjoyed in the 1970s. And even substantially lower than the scoring mm. and pace of play in Jordan's decade of the 80s and yes, even Jordan the 90s. Was. Factoring in pace of play and scoring rate, one can easily make the argument Kobe Bryant had the greatest scoring decade in NBA history during the two. Games. Yeah, when you look at the pace, you look at the the, the averages the team scored uh, per game. Like it really is remarkable what this dude was able to do, man. I mean, it really is. Like, bro, guys weren't scoring like that, bro. Like, to get 30 was a big deal back then. Thousands. The most lethal scoring weapon in that decade, and arguably the best ever. And in yeah. that decade, Kobe also Let made know, nine all-NBA defensive teams of that 10-year span, with seven of those being first-team selections. Hey, one, one dude tried me, yo. He was like, yo, I ain't know Kobe played defense like that. I'm like, yo, are you serious, bro? Like, you trying me right now. You try me, I want to swing on you. This is while being named an all-star and to an all-NBA team for all 10 years, eight of which were first team distinction. So like Duncan during this decade, Kobe was easily the best player at his position exactly. on both sides of the ball. But Kobe did this while leading the decade in points scored and scoring average. One of while one, scoring yo. over 5,000 more points for the decade than Tim Duncan. And during the decade. Kobe hey, y'all, hey, y'all, I, I want y'all to understand, right? This is no disrespect to Tim Duncan, but it's hard to do, bro. To score that amount of points that he had, had, had scored and then play defense is incredibly hard to do. If everybody could have done it, they would have. Everybody can't do that, yo. Everybody can't do what Kobe was doing. What he was doing takes endurance. It takes discipline. And, like, it, it, you just have to be strong-willed, bro.
six NBA Finals yeah. series more than anyone else and won four championships during mm -hmm. this 10-year span, also more than anyone else for the decade. And that was with Kobe going through a full-blown rebuild <laughs> in the middle part of the decade and wasting yep. two full seasons with dreadful supporting cast. But really, what did it take for him to get back to the finals? Three years? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, the dude lived in the finals in the 2000s. Which eventually would result in one of, if not the greatest playoff runs in NBA history to end this decade. Taking at the time his one time All Star in Pau Gasol and running through yeah, a woo. playoff gauntlet never before seen and never seen since to make three consecutive finals appearances, yes. winning back to back. Yes, titles. I can't take that in away. In his three year final can't take run that away from 2007 you, bro. through 2010. 11 of Brian's can't take away playoff from you, opponents, won at least 50 games during the regular season. Kobe would also lead the NBA playoffs in scoring for all three of those seasons, a feat accomplished by only one other player in modern NBA history, and that, of course, was you know Michael who. Jeffrey. Kobe, meanwhile, would also lead the Lakers in assists and steals over the three-year finals run, spanning 67 games in the postseason. While so that ball hog was the leading scorer, but he was also leading in assists for the Lakers. Ball hog, though. Averaging 30 points per game, right in the heart of the aforementioned slowest paced, lowest scoring decade ever. And yet, people actually say this decade is a toss up, or even more pathetic, try painting it as <coughs> Duncan's decade. When in reality, no one destroyed his era more thoroughly yeah. from a collective, individual, and team success standpoint than Kobe Bryant, other than Michael Jordan. And he did it with such style, such charisma, such flair. You know what I'm saying? Such pompous, such pompousness, such arrogance, such just, it, it, it was amazing to watch, man. Uh, it was amazing a lot to watch, man. Uh, he was electric. You know, just like Jordan, Jordan was electric. You got to, I think for a lot of you guys, man, you got to be alive to witness it. You know, if you've ever watched Michael Jackson, you're not going to understand, like, how larger than life the dude was. It's like watching Michael Jordan and Kobe. These dudes were larger than life. Mike had a little bit more fame than Kobe because Mike is Mike. You know what I'm saying? Like, this dude was... I mean, everything's packed with the Chicago Bulls. That's a rock star team, right? But Kobe had that same type of game. You know what I'm saying? But you have to witness it, y'all. And like, as a Lakers fan, I watched every game. So can't nobody tell me who was who or what was what. Nobody. Which is why we so hold many it players we and hold those it of us who actually watch this era have Kobe Bryant ranked so highly on those all-time lists. And while that does conclude our look at the 2000s, please make sure to subscribe and tune in for the next Man. and final episode of The GOAT by Decades when we take a look at the super team Yo, stacking crazy. decade of the 2010s. Until next time. Man, Scat, man, I appreciate it, bro. Uh, you've been holding Kobe down, man, and, and your videos are so fire, bro. They so fire, so much knowledge in there, and in each clip. And these aren't long videos. That's why I kind of like about them is that they kind of get straight to the point. Uh, I wish you kind of would make a compilation of all of these and be beautiful to have it from the '60s all the way to the 2000s or 2010s. I think that's the last series you're gonna do. Uh, but man, he does a great job on these videos, man. Great job. Um, uh, he makes them funny. He makes them interesting. And, uh, and, and, hey, I'm, I'm on board, man. I'm with it. Hey, y'all subscribe to Scap Attack, man. Give them those views, man. We got to start promoting people who put out good work. So go, go subscribe to my man, Scap Attack, yo. This is the Kobe Bryant film room. And I'll have.